What's going on guys? Alex here they own 4ADC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Civivi Knives Imperium. So this along with the Cormorant um, came in from the Apex Pass Arm group. Uh, shout out to David as always um, over at Blade Banner. He uh, runs a group and he gets all these really really cool knives in for us to check out. So thank you so much David. Um, we all greatly appreciate it. But similar, similarly to the Cormorant, uh, if you guys saw my last video, this is a knife that I signed up for um, and I kind of forgot about because it took a while to get to me um, through down through the channels. Um, and it was sort of a surprise when I got it. Um, this is not a new Civivi model by any means. I think this came out last spring, early summer, somewhere around there. Um, so I'm sure most of you have already seen reviews and stuff on this. Um, but I really, really like this knife. Um, I think this might be my favorite Civivi model to date as of right now. Um, it's, it's so good. Um, the materials are pretty cool. Uh, and I think for the price point uh, that we'll talk about later, I think it's a good a good value. Um, and I really just, I, like I said, I really do like it. It's fun to fidget with. Um, and I'm glad I finally got it in to check out. So um, we're going to jump right into materials. So this is, again, the Imperium. And this is rocking silver shred carbon fiber. Um, I, this is something that you have not seen Civivi do uh, too much, um, at least that I can remember. Uh, I know that they have done it here on the um, the Imperium. I th think they did some stuff like this on like some shred carbon on the bow model, I think. Um, and after that, I, I can't remember any. I'm sure that there's one or two that I'm missing, uh, but those are the two that pop into my mind right away. Um, they have done a couple for the Imperium specifically um, with the shred carbon. Like I said, this is silver, uh, and they have also done a um, copper carbon that is, I think it's just copper. Yeah, they just did a copper carbon and a silver carbon. Um, I'm on White Mountain Knives. They have also done okay. So the so the models they have a JG10. Um, for $68, they have a uh, copper carbon with a blackstone wash um, for $89. They have the golden carbon with um, a uh, stone wash or whatever uh, blade for $89 as well. They have three different micarta versions, a uh, green, a brown, and a uh, olive micarta with a Damascus blade for $85. I'm not a big fan of Damascus. And then they have this uh, silver carbon with the, um, is, it a, is it a stone wash or a bead blast? It looks like a stone wash, um, but I know Sadibi does a lot of bead blast, but I think this is a stone wash um, for $89 as well. So there are a lot of different uh, variants of this knife, a lot of different cool ones in my opinion. Um, so I will leave this one specifically linked to uh, White Mountain Knives down below for you to go and check it out. Um, from there, you can obviously move the site around or move around the site to find uh, the different variations and stuff like that. But this is a really cool material. Um, at first, I was kind of like, you know, I would just get like the JG10 and uh, uh, dye it a different color. Um, but this is kind of grown on me, and it's once you get it, you know, in person, it's definitely cool. You can see the flakes and the different, you know, flecks of carbon and, and silver and stuff like that. Um, so I really like how they did it. It has a nice sort of texture to it. Uh, it's, you know, rounded off nicely. There's no sharp edges. Um, so I like this material a lot. I think they did a, a, a good job on it. But um, continue, continuing, on, continuing on with the materials. I'm such a... I can't talk sometimes, guys. Um, you have a very Civivi-esque loop-over style deep carry clip here. Um, goes pretty much to the butt end of the knife. Uh, just due to the nature of the handle uh, shape, you know, you're not going to get to the deep deepest part of it but you know it works very very well you have a uh, front flipper here you have two thumb studs you have a very simple just sort of you know elongated drop point um, this is in nitro v i don't think it's yeah it does say it right here but typical civivi and we um, i don't know if you guys may have picked that up or not it's right at the um, base of the knife you guys might be able to see it if i get it in the right light um but they always put it right uh, like above the scale in real small lettering, so it's hard to see. Um, there is plenty of internal milling going on, specific or more specifically on the show side. Um, there is one, two, three, four, five uh, cutouts, I think, and then one small one on the uh, lock side. 
So this is a liner lock. You have some nice jimping down here. Um, this is a full flat grind. Uh, not, not a full flat grind, but pretty much a full flat grind because you have a swedge built in here and then kind of right here. Um, a very handsome looking knife in my opinion. Um, I tend to sort of like uh, more elongated, thinner knives. Um, and I think this looks really, really well done. You have a choil right here. Uh, it's on bearings. And I think that's all for materials. Um, I will say the Apocalypse is uh, inset into the scale with countersunk, screw countersunk screws, which is really, really cool. Uh, you don't see that combination too often on Civivi models. Um, I think most of the time you get uh, countersunk screws, but not inset into the scale. Um, so that's a really good combination of both. Um, and I think that's all for materials. So we're going to jump onto action. And action on this is very, very good. Um, it's very fun to fidget with and play with. Um, you have these blacked out thumb studs right here, so you can get a really good thumb flick. Oh. Fires right out of there when you don't do, you know, have a, a user error. Um, really good detent. Snaps right back into there, you guys can see. Very good detent. Middle finger flick is awesome. You can slow roll it out, thumb flick it out. You can uh, pointer finger, flick it out, middle finger, flick it out. And then you obviously have the top flipper here that works very, very well, or front flipper. You can top flip it. This thing is just really, really fun to play with. Um, like, <laughs> I had a hard time picking between this and the Cormorant sometimes when I was just looking for a knife to sit with at my desk and fidget with. Um, I would sometimes have to play with the corn wrap for like 10 minutes and then switch over to this and play with this for 10 minutes. Um, it's just so fun to fidget with. Like the detent is really dialed. There is no blade, play, uh, a hair of blade play, um, but this thing is relatively, you know, solid as a rock. Uh, you have a pretty good access to the lock bar right here. You just drops to your nail, shakes closed, drops to your nail, shakes closed. Even if you try to get your nail out of the way, it still kind of stops right there. But um, I, I mean, I like knives that are like that. Because um, sometimes when you just have an absolute guillotine that's just going to swing the whole way shut. Um, I mean, those are fun and all. Like, I really enjoy having those knives too. Um, but, you know, there's just something about having it drop to your nail and then just feeling its smoothness when it's, you know, two or three shakes to get home. So um, action is very, very well done on this knife. Um, the clip is not reversible, which I forgot to mention that, um, but even as a lefty, action's good because it's a liner lock, so you're not going to have any issues. Fire that out, top uh, front flipper. So, I mean, very, very well done. Um, the detent is just, it's hard to tune a detent well for all deployment methods, but for this, it seems like they did. Um, I should have. Something stuck in my throat. I mean, the, the detent for the thumb studs is, is just phenomenal. And then the top flipper, just or front flipper, just, I mean, you guys can hear that. It's just banging out of there. Just an absolute breeze and an absolute joy to uh, manipulate. So action is two thumbs up. Um, next up is K or Ergos. And this is obviously, you know, a slender, slim sort of knife, styling of knife. Um, you have some jimping right top up top here. Uh, you have a choil. You have the jimping from the liner lock. Um, and when I'm choked back here, uh, I have a natural restriction point. I can get a nice, easy four fingers on here. Um, it's very comfortable. I will say the pock lip kind of sticks a little bit, you know, proud of the scale. Um, and this sort of, you know, because it, it gradually comes down and it comes up real quick. Um, so I can definitely feel that kind of poking right in the middle of my, you know, it's not my palm, but like north of my palm in my hand. Um, it's not terrible, but I can definitely feel it. But when you choke up here, um, it becomes less of an issue. Uh, and I can just get a very, no, again, I actually didn't talk to Siri last video. So that is the first time I think I've done that in a while, but of course you gotta make an, make an appearance in this one. Um, but very comfortable with this choil up here. Uh, I can get my thumb basically to the, you know, almost to the point of the knife and it's, it's very comfortable, very controlled if you're going to be doing some precise cutting. Um, the blade is relatively thin. Uh, it comes down to a nice thin edge behind the, uh, a nice thin behind the edge. Can't talk right now. Um, 
but so if you're gonna be doing some slicing uh, this thing is very well equipped to do that um, and nitro v is a great steel holds a really good edge um, it's probably one of my favorite budget steels but yeah ergos back here up here really really you know nice um, you can do it in this reverse kind of draw cut um, you could probably use this as a self like if you had to like stab into something um, you do have a nice sort of ramp back here nice landing point if you had to like drive into something or like if you were trying to defend yourself with it um, probably would you know do that very very well um, one thing I did forget to mention with materials you guys know that I there's always something that I forget to mention in the materials that I always mention, like in a later category. Um, you do have a backspacer here and then sort of a lanyard post you can use. Um, I like that it's in there and you're not, you don't have a lanyard hole. I like that a lot. But uh, Argos are great, um, very comfortable. Um, you know, no hot spots really besides just this point right here. Um, kind of catches a little bit once in a while. I wish I would have made that come up and then sort of plateau off so you don't have such a sharp point. Um, but again, this is a knife from last year, I believe. Um, so I, I think in the newer CDD models, they are starting to do that more often, sort of more plateauing more. Um, but yeah, ergos are good. Next up, we have carry. Um, again, you have a loop over style deep carry clip. Almost goes to the button of the knife. You do have a little bit sticking out there, right towards the top. Um, but you know, for the most part, it's a deep carry clip. Um, and it drops in. You have nothing here that you're gonna catch your hand on. Uh, there's no flipper tab. It's all you know rounded off nicely, no sharp edges. Um, for you know being a three and a half inch blade, I think this is like 3.4, so almost three and a half inches of, of a blade. Um, it's relatively lightweight because you have a lot of internal milling in there um, and it just drops in your pocket. It's nice and thin and slim. You don't have much knife sticking out here. Um, so this, this thing was a great carry for me. Uh, I've carried this, you know, numerous times. I think I honestly carried this more than the Cormorant, if I'm being honest, maybe once or twice more. Um, but I had no issues at all. Just drops right in. I mean, it's, it's just a breeze to carry. Um, you know, I kind of feel like a broken record a lot of the times with a lot of my knives because I just don't really have much to say about them. But that's how a lot of the ones are that I review. Like, I just, I don't have any issues with carrying them. Um, I mean, I guess you could try to say the paw clip could be on an angle a little bit more to get more deep carry but to me that is enough uh, you know as it is um i should my watch is still on but i've really just had no complaints with this um carries well uh, and we'll just jump right into last my last category of what i recommend this knife and price point so our price point for this specific one is 89 dollars, 90 bucks um and you know Savivi, I feel like, started sort of in that 40 to $50 dollar range, and they've gradually moved up to sort of, I mean, they still have some models in that range, but I feel like their bread and butter is from like 60 to like 95 somewhere in there. Um, and I know that people have kind of gotten rubbed the wrong way from that, but they are using really good materials too for that, I mean, uh, range. Like 90 bucks, you're getting a really nice Nitro V blade, um, dual thumb studs, nice top flipper, uh, just a dialed detent. This thing is a fidgeting dream as well. Like it's just so fun to play with. Um, you're getting this really cool shred silver carbon fiber that you don't see too often. Um, kind of classes the knife up a little bit. You're getting a loop over style deep carry pocket clip. Uh, nice and thin and slim. Like ergos are great. Action's great. Carry's great. For 90 bucks, I think that's a great price. Um, I am a little confused why the uh, Damascus bladed ones are less than this one because normally Damascus is more expensive because it's more of a fancier knife because um, those are $85. So that's just kind of confusing. Um, but you can get the uh, JG10 one for 68, which I think is an even better deal because um, you're still getting that Nitro blade or Nitro V blade. Um, and you know, if you don't mind JG10, which I don't, uh, but you can also, it's its basically a blank canvas. You can dye it any single color you want. Um, so for 68 bucks, and again, you can use a Lefty 10 or a Knives Fast 10, or I forget what Casey's over at Knives Fast uh, code is, but you can save 10%. So you're gonna save like, you know, eight bucks, seven, eight bucks on there. So um, yeah, I just think for the price, it, CVV did a really well, uh, awesome job on here. Um, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm glad I, I, I'm sad I got to the party so late, but I'm glad I got to be here at all. Um, 
I really kind of want to go out and buy one of these. Um, I don't even, like I said, I don't even need the shred carbon one. I could try to find like the uh, JG10 one um, or even buy it brand new. But I just have other stuff I'm going to chase right now. Um, but at the end of the day, if I have an inch to get a new knife um, that's sort of in the budget range, I might have to go pull the trigger on one of these and add it to the collection um, and do a really cool die job on it. Because I, this is just a great knife. Like this is, I mean, this just as I, I, I really have enjoyed carrying this and playing with it and using it. Um, like I said, it's probably my favorite Civivi that I've handled so far. Um, and I had high expectations for it and it, they really kind of blew them out of the water. So um, I actually, I absolutely would recommend this knife. Um, for the price point, I think the materials you're getting are very, very solid. Um, at all, you know, really all three stages. I mean, you're get you can get uh, G10 and Nitro V for 68 bucks. You can get uh, Shred Carbon and Nitro V for 90 bucks, or you can get Damascus Steel or Damascus and Micarta for 85. So, whichever type of guy you are, if you're a G10 guy, if you're sort of a fancy carbon fiber guy, or if you're a um, Damascus guy, it kind of fits all three of those realms. So, really good, awesome, super cool materials. Um, that was a mouthful, but yeah, I'm really glad I got this in and I'm, I'm definitely going to miss this one. So in the future, I might have to pick one up um, just to, you know, if I find a good deal on one or if I just decide to buy one brand new, um, it's just a, it's a really good knife and the detent is so snappy and so crisp on here. Um, I have really enjoyed this. So thank you guys so much, um, you know, for listening to me rant and rave. Uh, you know, I tend to ramble a lot, but you guys know how it is, but um, this was my full review of the Civivi Knives Imperium. Um, really, really cool piece. I'm super glad I got to check this one out. Um, shout out to the Apex Pass Arm Group. Shout out to David at Blade Banner. And shout out to you guys. Uh, thank you guys, you know, so much for watching and so much for, you know, just listening, listening to me stumble over my damn words because I do that a lot. Um, and you think after doing a year of YouTube, you know, I'd get better at it, but, um, you know, still happens so uh, I just want to thank you guys for still riding along with me um, and still watching my talk my, see I can't talk um, watching my content because I know it's been very sporadic recently um, I'm trying to get down to where I can start filming um, more consistently I just have to sort of adapt to my new work schedule but I know you guys understand and you uh, you know you don't care really so whenever I get content out you guys will watch it but Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I just said that three times, I think, within the last two minutes. Uh, but if you are not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, I really, really would appreciate it. Uh, drop a like on the video, too. And uh, leave a comment down below if, if you guys have an Imperium, because, again, it is a little bit of an older knife. Um, you know, let me know what your thoughts are on it. So I would love to read about it and uh, comment back. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys as, well. uh, thank you guys as always. Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, take care, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.